goth rock, death rock, dark wave, cyber goth. Being goth is a really difficult thing to define. Being rebellious, but with a macabre or dark structure behind it. Well, <laughs> I think to be goth means to not be afraid anymore. The goth scene is starting to become a lot more inclusive, multicultural and everything. The time is now to be loud, be proud, be yourself. Scheinbar ist dieser Look wieder total im Kommen. Alles getragen ist schwarz, mit Stacheln und bleichen Gesichtern. Die Gothic-Subkultur scheint von den Toten aufzuerstehen, um im Mainstream für etwas Leben zu sorgen. Ich habe mich dorthin begeben, wo die mystische Bewegung Ende der 70er ihren Anfang nahm, nach London. Dort gibt es eine neue Gothic-Szene mit Künstlern, die in der makabren Ästhetik und den diabolischen Soundtracks ihre Erfüllung finden. Goth has always evolved over the years since since the late 70s with all the different influences. I feel maybe now might be a bit different. I feel like things have kind of spread out even more. Maybe the look is a lot more inspired by posthumanism or transhumanism. Als erstes treffe ich Parma Ham. Ja, er nennt sich wirklich Parma Schinken und versteht das als Kritik an der Konsumgesellschaft, die uns ihren Stempel aufdrücken will. Als sei jeder von uns eine Schinkenkeule. Is it a cat goth? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, just look at them. They kind of look like a bat. Yeah. Ich bin klar on what I do as if I've got one. I'm an artist. I kind of go in a lot of different directions. I really don't like to stick to one medium. And I've done painting, I've done sculpture, I've done performance. I've done music, I've done DJ. I don't like to stick to one thing. Like I find it uh, almost quite limiting. Ham, wie ihn seine Freunde nennen, ist eine zentrale Figur der neuen Gothic Szene Londons. I don't really think my method is that much different to everyone else. It's the same thing. It's just we want to look nice, and this is my version of what nice is. An diesem Tag legt Ham für ein Fotoshooting eine Kreation von Judea Williams Braham an. Shall we? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do it. <laughs> this is essentially like a, a youth culture. Like it's dominated by people in their teenagers and twenties, and. You know, youth culture is something that's rebellious. It can't be something that, you know, your parents were doing 20, 30, 40 years ago. Like it needs to be something which maybe might upset other people and might be too extreme or people might think it's stupid and they don't get it. That is kind of the point. Can you get the white foundation? And the sponge, I think it's upstairs. Thanks for that. I think like the resurgence of subculture right now might come down to the facts, I guess the politics of the mainstream. <laughs> There's just so many things to be angry. Ecological crisis that's happening, the wealth divides, rebelling against the way some of us are treated. Tell you what, if I had my kids in now, smack them straight in the fucking face. I'm glad we got that. Wow. That's nice. Us. <laughs> Thank you, babe. <laughs> that was a lot, back to back. Yeah. I started off quite young, at maybe the age of 13, and that's how I kind of like edged into goth and metal music. Like that? The dark clothes and the trashy, messed up makeup kind of came through. With goth specifically, it was this outlet of wearing 
clothes of like the opposite gender to having long hair to painting my nails wearing makeup and that just kind of provided a excuse as to the reason why I could dress in a slightly different way without necessarily saying like I'm queer or, or I'm non-binary or anything like that but I definitely think a lot of like maybe the more almost horror-esque elements you know maybe that some of that does come from you know the struggle with it you know struggling maybe with yourself but also struggling with the rest of the world Am Anfang entdeckte er durch den Goth und die ausgefallenen Kostümierungen die verschiedenen Facetten seiner Persönlichkeit Seit er sein konservatives Heimatdorf Guildford verließ und nach London zog wurde daraus eine Philosophie und eine Waffe Seit 2019 lädt Parma Ham zu Wraith-Abenden ein, auf denen sich die Community in verschiedenen Londoner Clubs trifft. Obviously there's a lot of politics involved with the way we dress, but it's okay shaving your hair into a mohawk and saying that, but what does that actually mean? So when I talk about the way I look and the things I've received and stuff, and what makes Wraith political, Of course it's political. We're literally doing a fundraiser for LGBTQI refugees. We are doing politics. It's not just us ourselves and our looks that cause friction. We are doing politics. Welcome to Wraith, everyone. Let's get in. You look amazing. Thank you. Musik, Mode, Poesie. Parma Hams Wraith-Abende sind eine transgressive Performance von Künstlern mit einem Hang zum Düsteren, zu Transhumanismus und Fetischismus. It was instantly quite successful and well liked and it just kind of like took off from there. Maybe in the 70s and 80s and 90s, you know, there, there was kind of like a bit of a almost diversity problem when you look at subculture. It was very white, it was very male-led, it was very straight, um, and it was very cisgender. Whereas now, when you go to a place like Rafe, things have changed a lot. Viele assoziieren Goth immer noch mit Rock und Metal. Doch für seine Rafe-Abende ließ sich Parma Ham eher von Raves inspirieren. Deshalb sieht die Playlist etwas anders aus. most hardest, loudest music you can imagine. I mean, it's Gabba music, it's hardcore, it's up-tempo, it's more post-human. To an outsider, it would probably be quite horrific, but I find it quite compelling and unpredictable. As soon as I went to Wraith, I felt like a genuine, like, physical shift in my energy. No matter how Amazing our experiences have been. This is still just the beginning and it, like the life that we have ahead of us is incredible. Ce qui est magique avec Ray, c'est que c'est pas juste une soirée, c'est un espace de tolérance et je pense qu'à l'heure actuelle, c'est important d'avoir des espaces comme ça because à cause du climat politique actuel avec la montée grandissante de l'extrême droite un petit peu partout en Europe. I think platforms like this are like really essential. I would say it's definitely kind of like changed the makeup of the London scene and environment. It started off almost like a movement of people, which I don't think would really exist without us. Das ist L9, der Hausfotograf dieser Abende. Er dokumentiert die Entwicklung der neuen Goth-Generation, die so exzentrisch, vielfältig und bunt ist wie noch nie. Goths wear color now. That is something crazy. I mean, someone said to me, why it's only black, and at first I didn't get behind it, but then turns out people really be wearing color now, and it's right? looking kind of cute. Yeah. I think Hello Kitty's the new black. I think <laughs> Ham was saying to me the other day, I'm not sure if I'm feeling like a goth or I've been in like being Hello Kitty today. I think we're all about experimentation. I think people don't have any fear anymore. We're not putting ourselves in a box. Sometimes we want to be Hello Kitty and sometimes we want to wear black. 
Love it for everybody else. Love it for anyone else. I think I want to photograph color, but in black and white. <lacht> L9 lichtet die Künstler der Community nicht nur auf Wraith-Abenden ab. Erst wollten wir zwar für ein Fotoshooting auf einen Friedhof gehen, doch dann treffen wir uns im Viertel Herringay zusammen mit zwei DJs der Wraith-Partys. What makes this night, this event, this movement so special? I think like with Wraith compared to other nights, it's like so much more inclusive because like everyone that goes is really individual, whether that's like the way they express themselves artistically or like just like in their appearance. So cute. I was an observer of the scene until I met my friends. I told them like a few months ago, I was, I was like, I think I've decided that I'm now a part of the scene. And they were like, Elle, what, are you t what the fuck are you talking about? You're the center of the scene. I was like... Something about photographing in the darkness. In, in, in the scene, in nightlife, is you're not always going to capture like that perfect image. I always try and think about the experience first and then the image after. I would never want to interfere with like, what's happening. Never ask permission, beg for forgiveness. <laughs> That's something quite important for me. If you ask for permission, they're probably going to say no, so you may as well get that, get that shot without interfering in the experience, obviously. Cute. Palmer Ham and L9 see in the goth community the possibility to express I went to an all-girls grammar school when I was in high school, which was interesting, because now I'm a trans man. You want to see? My nipples are a bit cunted right now. Hmm. How do you feel? Anyway, um, pretty good. Sorry, nude. Diversity and inclusion should be celebrated and people need to know that they might not feel like they fit in, but at some point you will find your people. Like, I'm... I should not be admitting this, but I'm 26 years old. <laughs> I'm 26 years old and it took me until this year to meet my people. <laughs> Come to Rave. <laughs> Die Gothic-Bewegung entstand Ende der 70er Jahre aus der Punk-Bewegung, nahm aber auch Einflüsse anderer Subkulturen auf. Die Ästhetik der neuen Generation hat auch viel mit Mangas und Animes gemeinsam. Die bunte Cybergoth-Welt von Pixie Venom äußert sich sowohl in ihrer Arbeit als Illustratorin als auch in ihrer Musik. Wir treffen uns in Camden, das für seine Alternativkultur bekannt ist. I used to live here, so yeah, I grew up with, like really close to Kentish Town, so I've watched um, Camden kind of like change a bit. It's become a bit more gentrified now, but like it's still got some of the bits that like I grew up with and really liked. Dann zeigt mir Pixie ihre private Gruft, ausgeleuchtet in lila, ihrer Lieblingsfarbe. So I suppose like all of my style is. Um Influenced by a mishmash of like the cyber, like gothic, um, anime kind of drag kind of stuff that I like to do sometimes. Um, just kind of like very big eyes, like like very like um, gothic, like kind of like gliding and everything, but it's kind of in a draggy way. So it's just a mishmash of things, I suppose. Can I sit down here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is my batliff. Um, it's one of my favorite weapons that I managed to find somewhere deep on the internet. I usually just use it for shoots as well. I used to be able to like spin it and like do some tricks, but like I can't do that anymore. <laughs> there is um, my little like two-headed tubby here. It's a backpack. The handles are 
I I made this one and um my old friend made this one. We were just like we were just like drawing on it together back when we were like seventeen. Um just has like a bunch of like dark emo writing stuff on it. Like um hands of time will wring my neck every moment, spells regret. <laughs> just stuff like that. I never fit in anywhere when I was at school, to be honest. I was bullied about my looks, I was just bullied about the way that I walked, the way that I talked, like it was just, it was literally everything. Als Reaktion auf das Mobbing wendet sich die Gymnasiastin der Gothic-Bewegung zu und knüpft Online-Kontakte zur Community. Diese Einflüsse prägen ihre künstlerische Arbeit. I use Sci, Illustrator, I use Photoshop, I use Paint.net, like to make these images, I, it's never just like on one program. It's kind of like a depiction of me. Um, it's the like um, borderline uh, state of uh, bipolar disorder where it's showing like the lows and the highs and everything. I made the drawing to have like a split free heads because it shows like um, like how my emotions will like change when I'm experiencing these things basically. Yeah, I kind of experiment with like electronic, like punk, like digipunk kind of stuff and gothic kind of things with my music. Um, I'm also like kind of like sort of video gamey kind of stuff as well sometimes. Um, but yeah, kind of just like a mishmash of beats and uh, me like screaming on top of it basically. <laughs> When I'm on stage, I'm just able to just dispel everything that's, you know, been a burden on me before. It's nice that um, people can just relate to the kind of like pain and stuff I've been through and um, make it something happy instead. Just being in the, in the queer graph scene is just, it's just made my life so much better. I'm just so much more comfortable with myself. Die Gothic-Bewegung schöpft aus der Bilderwelt des Düsteren. Doch bei den neuen Londoner Goths spüre ich auch viel Optimismus. Ihre Rebellion verbreitet gute Laune an Orten, an denen alle willkommen sind. Auch in einer düsteren Szene kann man viel Spaß haben. I mean, one of the slogans of punk, I think, was like, no future. And that's honestly how a lot of people kind of felt. And maybe what's changed now is a lot of the people around me are forward-looking. Maybe there's a lot more optimism there. I think that optimism kind of comes from almost like the excitement of like the next thing and I guess creating for the future. <laughs>